A computer monitor is the primary output component of a computer. It connects to the computer's video adapter through a monitor cable and displays images on the screen. A computer monitor may have a VGA, DVI, HDMI or a display port. We have an older type of monitor, known as a cathode ray tube CRT. This technology was first used in TV sets. These monitors are bulky and heavy, occupying a significant amount of desk space. They are pretty much obsolete in the marketplace today. An image is produced on a CRT by using three color electron guns. These colors are red, blue, and green, which, when you combine them, are able to produce any color on the color spectrum. And these guns shoot beams of electrons on the screen and create an image that we see. These beams repeatedly sweep across the face of the monitor many times per second. So it's constantly redrawing the image that we see on the screen. And this redrawing of the image is known as the refresh rate, which is measured in hertz. So, for instance, if the refresh rate is 60 hertz, then that means that the beams sweep across the entire face of the monitor, redrawing the image at the rate of 60 times per second. Now, to the naked eye, most people cannot detect this because it does it so fast. But a lot of times, some people complain of discomfort in their eyes because they are noticing this constant refreshing of the image. But this problem is usually solved by increasing the refresh rate, which makes the refreshing of the image less noticeable, and this reduces the amount of eye discomfort. Inside CRT monitors is a metal plate called a shadow mask. This metal plate can pick up external magnetic fields, which can cause discoloration on the screen. Because of this, cathode ray tube monitors need to be degaussed. Degaussing is the process of getting rid of the unwanted magnetic fields, and most CRTs do an automatic degauss when the monitor is turned on. Or the monitor may have a button that you can press to do a degauss. Another type of monitor is LCD, which stands for Liquid Crystal Display. LCD monitors produce an image on a flat surface by using liquid crystals. Light shines through these crystals to produce an image on the screen, and it uses filters to produce different colors. LCDs were first used in laptop computers and have now made their way to the desktop marketplace and have completely replaced CRT monitors. They are lighter, thinner, use less power, and take up less space than CRTs. LCDs are also known as flat panel displays. Modern LCDs use a technology called TFT, which stands for Thin Film Transistor. And, as the name implies, this technology uses a thin film transistor to create a higher quality image when compared to a standard LCD. Because each single pixel on the screen has its own transistor, and all LCDs sold today have TFT technology. Now, there are two different types of LCD monitors that you're going to need to know. One of them is called TN, which stands for Twisted Pneumatic. This type of LCD monitor works by liquid crystals actually twisting the light as it comes through. TN is an older and cheaper technology that's been around for several decades. The viewing angles and the color reproduction on a TN monitor are not as good as a more modern LCD monitor. A TN monitor is often used with calculators, digital watches, and older LCD monitors. There is a more modern type of LCD monitor called an IP ears or in plane switching. This type of monitor works by, instead of the liquid crystals twisting like in a TN monitor, the liquid crystals in an IPS monitor stay in place and are aligned in parallel with the glass. IPS LCDs use more transistors than a TN monitor, so as a result, it does consume more power. 
IPS monitors were designed to improve on the limitations of TN monitors. They offer better color reproduction and better viewing angles. In order for LCD monitors to show an image on the screen, they need a light source, and there are a couple of types of backlighting that locked monitors use. And one type of lighting is by using fluorescent lamps. These fluorescent lamps are the circular, straight tubing types similar to the regular fluorescent lamps that we're all used to seeing. These lamps emit ultraviolet light that's created when the mercury vapor inside the lamp is ionized. Another type of backlighting that LCD monitors use is LED. LED monitors use multiple light-emitting diodes that are arranged in a pattern that displays the images on the screen. Now, this is a more modern form of backlighting compared to fluorescent lamp backlighting. In fact, most if not all new LCDs today use LED backlighting. Now, both of these monitors are considered LCD monitors, but the LCD that uses the LED backlighting is considered an LED monitor. So, an LED monitor is just an LCD monitor that uses LED back lighting. Let's talk about resolution. Resolution is defined as the number of pixels that are used to display an image on the screen. For instance, if a monitor is set to a resolution of 1280 by 720, then this means that there are 1280 horizontal pixels by 720 vertical pixels. This means that there are 921,600 total pixels that are being used. The higher the resolution, the higher the number of pixels will be used, which means a clearer and sharper image. Depending upon the hardware and software being used, resolutions can be set anywhere from 640 by 480 up to 1920 by 1200 or more. LCDs produce their best quality image when they are set to their highest resolution which is called their native resolution. Resolutions are also given different names for identity purposes. For example, XGA stands for Extended Graphics Array. This has a resolution of 1028 by 768. SXGA stands for Super Extended Graphics Array, and it has a resolution of 1280 by 1024. SXGA Plus stands for Super Extended Graphics Array Plus. This has a resolution of 1400 by 1050. UXGA stands for Ultra Extended Graphics Array with a resolution of 1600 by 1200 And WUXGA stands for Widescreen Ultra Extended Graphics Array and this has a resolution of 1920 by 1200. And lastly, the contrast ratio. The contrast ratio refers to the contrast between black and white. The higher the contrast, the better the display. Printers allow the ability to print copies of documents or pictures onto paper from a computer. There are several different ways that a computer can connect to a printer. The most common way is by using a USB or parallel cable. This is known as a local connection because the printer is directly connected to the computer. But you can also connect a printer through a network if the printer has a network interface, such as an Ethernet port or a wireless antenna. These are known as network printers. Network printers are convenient because the printer can be placed anywhere, in a home or office as long as it's connected to the network. Another method of connecting is through a network share. For example, you can allow other computers that are on your network to connect to your local printer by sharing your printer over the network. So, after the printer share setup is complete, 
the other computers can now print to the printer that is connected to your computer. Your computer acts as a gateway for other computers to access your printer. But the drawback is that your computer has to be on in order for others to use your printer. There are several different types of printers. There are non-impact printers and impact printers. These include laser, inkjet, and thermal printers. Impact printers are dot matrix printers, which we'll talk about next. Inkjet printers are the most common printers that are used for home use. An inkjet printer works by the printhead moving back and forth across the paper during printing. During this process, the printhead places ink on the paper in very tiny dots. In fact, these dots are so tiny that they are smaller in diameter than a human hair. And as these dots are precisely placed, they form to create an image on paper. Inkjet printers typically come with two ink cartridges, one for color and the other for black. Inkjet printers are more affordable than laser printers, and they produce great photo quality result. But one of the drawbacks is that the ink from an inkjet printer may smudge, while thing from a laser printer does not smudge. The next printers we're going to talk about are laser printers. Laser printers come in different sizes, from small personal ones to larger ones for businesses. They provide the highest quality print available today, and they are the most expensive. A laser printer works by placing an electric charge on a rotating drum. Then a laser discharges a lower electrical charge on the drum. So basically, the laser draws the image that is going to be printed on the drum itself. Then the drum is coated with a fine black powder, known as toner. And as the drum is being coated, the toner only clings to the areas where the laser has drawn. Then, as the paper goes through the printer, the toner is placed on the paper, and the result is a high-quality print that is second to none. Another non-impact printer is called a thermal printer. Thermal printers print by using heat. Thermal printers use special print paper called thermal paper and on this thermal paper is wax-based ink and when heat is applied to this ink it turns black. In a thermal printer, the only thing the printhead does is apply heat to the areas where the ink should be placed. Then, when the ink is cooled, it becomes permanent. And because of this technology, thermal printers are very quiet. Thermal printers are commonly used for printing labels and barcodes. Dot matrix printers are almost non-existent today. They are an old technology that produces mediocre print quality when compared to laser or inkjet printers. And they are also very noisy. Dot matrix printers are impact printers. The printhead in a dot matrix printer moves across the paper. And as it moves, the pins on the printhead strike against a cloth ink ribbon, which then comes in direct contact with the paper, producing each character in the form of dots. But despite being an outdated technology, dot matrix printers can print multi-copy documents like carbon copies. They are also durable and last a long time. Several issues are going to happen when you're printing. So, for instance, if you're printing something and you see streaks, well then, this could be a problem with the ink cartridges on an inkjet printer. A lot of times, the software that comes with the printer will have a list of software tools that you can use to clean the printhead. Or if the streaks are really bad, you may have to remove the ink cartridges from the printhead and manually clean them with a lint-free cloth. 
Another problem that can happen is when you try to print something and the image is faded, or it's completely blank. This could also be a problem with dirty ink cartridges, or it could be something as simple as maybe you're low on ink. Ghosting is another problem that can happen with laser printers. Ghosting is when you see a faint image of a page that you previously printed, and you see the same image on a newly printed page. This is usually caused by the drum or the fuser. The drum on the laser printer has a lifespan after so many prints, and then you have to replace it. So you can try replacing the drum, but if you still see the same problem after you replace the drum, then the problem could be the fuser, so then the fuser would have to be replaced. Paper jams are another problem that can happen with printers, so if you try to print something and the paper doesn't come out well, then you could have a paper jam. Paper jams could be caused by debris inside the printer. And debris inside the printer could also be the result of the paper coming out creased. Or it could also be caused by faulty pickup rollers. This typically happens with older printers because when the rollers air out, they tend to have difficulty grabbing the paper and feeding it through. So, in these cases, you might want to inspect the rollers to see if they need replacing or open up the printer, and check for any debris inside the printer. Another issue is that if you're printing something and the color may not be printing correctly, and all this could be is that maybe that one of the color ink cartridges is faulty, or they are low on ink, or even out of ink. Often, when you try to print something and nothing happens, it could be a connectivity issue. Connectivity issues are extremely common, especially when you're dealing with network printers, but the first things to check are the obvious ones. For example, make sure the printer is turned on or check for any errors on the printer's LCD display if it has one. Or if the printer has a wired connection, then make sure that the network cable is connected correctly. You should always check the obvious things first before diving into the more complicated issues such as seeing if the printer has an actual IP address, because doing the simple and obvious things first will save you a lot of time. Virtual printing is done for several reasons, and one of those reasons is called print to file. Print to file saves a document in a ready to print format that another printer can print. So for instance, if you want to print a document and you don't have a printer, you can use the print to file feature, and it will save the document in an uneditable digital form that can be sent to another computer, either through email or a flash, drive transfer, and then that computer can print the job for you. Another form of virtual printing is called print to PDF. PDF stands for Portable Digital Format. Printing a file to PDF prints a virtual document into a format that is universally readable across all devices, whether it is a PC, Mac or smartphone. Once it's printed to a PDF, the file can be transferred to different devices, such as through email or a flash drive. And because the PDF format is so common, just about every new device on the market today will be able to read a PDF file without adding any additional software. The most common PDF reader is Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is available for download. This video is part of our full Comp TAA Plus course, which can be found in the description. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.